Hi guys, uh, this is Jonathan Lambert with the Mathematics Development and Support Service at the National College of Ireland uh, and in this short video uh, we're going to deal with what's known as a Katoka Safety Force Criterion uh, that's going to help us to make a, a, a decision in relation to which portfolio we should uh, choose uh, once we know the characteristics of the portfolio as in we know the portfolio's expected return or we know the return of the portfolio and we know the standard deviation of the portfolio so in this case I have three portfolios portfolio A, B and C we have the returns in each case 8%, 11%, and 14% respectively, uh, and the standard deviations are 3, 5, and 8%. Okay? And the question that we have here is uh, which portfolio should we choose? And we want to choose the portfolio based off Katoka's safety force criterion. So, what does it say? Well, it says, uh, see, with Raya's criterion, Raya's criterion asks us to choose a, a pain level, a minimum return level that we don't want to fall below. Okay, and with respect to rise criterion, the question is, what's the probability of falling below that particular return level, or to choose the prob to choose a portfolio that minimizes the probability of falling below that return level? With Katoka Safety First Criterion, what we're going to do is we're going to actually choose the probability, or more importantly, the way we'd like to define that is we're actually going to choose the risk level. Okay, so we're going to choose a particular risk level, and we're going to select a portfolio uh, which hof offers uh, the highest minimum return. Uh, consistent with that particular risk level. Maybe if I just write that down here, yeah? Okay, so Katoka's Safety Force Criterion, uh, uh, I suppose, based on Katoka's Safety Force Criterion, uh, we accept, we accept, okay, a specific, a specific risk level, okay, risk level, and let's say that's our alpha, okay, and, and we select, we select, the portfolio, the portfolio, okay, uh, that offers, okay, that offers okay, the highest, the highest minimum return, minimum return, okay, uh, consistent, consistent, okay, with, with the risk level, with the risk level. What the hell do we mean by this? Okay, well let's think about it. Okay, we have a certain portfolio. So we have a portfolio that has characteristics. It has a return. Okay, it has an expected return. Let's say or bar. Okay, uh, and what we're going to do is we're going to choose some risk level, some alpha. Okay, so we're going to choose some alpha, which tells us how much area we're actually going to put in the tail. Okay, and based off that alpha, uh, what we're going to be able to calculate is we're going to be able to calculate this lower, this lower uh, value. This let's say this risk level here. Okay, we're going to be able to we're going to be able to uh, calculate this actual uh, return level. This this return level uh, that we don't want to fall below. Okay, but the return level that we need to choose. Okay is based off the alpha it's based off how much area that we put in the in the in the left hand tail and i suppose out of all the possible portfolios okay we're going to choose the one that has the highest uh, the highest let's say the highest uh, return okay the, the highest minimum return okay uh, consistent with this particular risk with this particular risk level so let's choose portfolio a and let's calculate i suppose the high the, this minimum return level okay that would go along with a particular with a particular alpha okay so let's say for argument's sake okay let's say for argument's sake that we choose uh, let's say we choose an acceptable risk level okay so let's say the acceptable the acceptable risk level okay, uh, is alpha is equal to 10% or 0 0.10 okay uh, so what we will need to find out is what is rl so what is what is what's rl okay for each portfolio for each portfolio okay so let's do it. So for portfolio A, for portfolio A, okay, what we know is we're putting, uh, we're putting zero point, we're putting zero point zero one of the area in in this particular tail here, okay? So I'm wondering what is that Z score that goes along with that one there, okay? This is from a standard normal perspective, yeah? What's that Z score that has 0 0.1, uh, has 10% of the area to the left-hand side of it, okay? If 10% is to the left-hand side, what we know is, and don't forget this is a negative Z score, okay? So to a rotation, okay, to a rotation, rotate, okay? What we know is that we must have, it's a positive Z score over here, okay? And we must have 0. 
0 0.10 of the area in the in this particular right hand tail which means that we must have 0 0.9000 of the area to the left of this z so air tables are cumulative tables okay uh, so i'm looking for 0 0.90 so 0 0.90 seems to be well there's 0 0.9015 that's 15 cent above it there's 0 0.8977 so it seems to be the z score seems to be 1.2 Eight. So this is 1.28 is the Z score here, which means that the Z score over here is equal to minus minus 1.28. So actually, it doesn't matter what portfolio we have. All the portfolios, the Z score uh, that has 10% of the area to the left hand side of it uh, is minus 1.28. So now I suppose really with portfolio A. So